as she sweeps through the waters to rescue you and me and land us safely in the port with friends we love so dear get ready cries the captain oh look she's on Oh, 
Uh, but you do need to pray for them. And in, in the village they're in, they have a lot of Haitian refugees. And uh, Sherry, you remember being there with us and then where the Haitians would live in those abandoned homes. So uh, pray, for the, pray for the Johnsons. And then one other announcement. On March the 22nd, which will be a week from this Friday, there is a men's banquet down at Calvary's Grace Baptist Church at Ailey where Brother Brian Patrick pastors. And I was in meeting there last night, and I went ahead and reserved a table. Uh, so I've got, uh, I've got at least four tickets. I've got two of them spoken for. I've got four more tickets if we, any of you men want to go. And it will be a good time. They'll, they'll give away some, you know how they do at these men's meetings. They give away some prizes and different things. But they are going to serve a low country boil. Mm -hmm. And uh, there'll be some uh, smoked chicken and stuff like that. Uh, as far as the meal goes, good preaching, good fellowship. It's $5, so I've got four more tickets if any of you fellas like to go. What, what are we smoking? I think I'll put my overalls on and go. Yeah. Come on. Uh, come on, go. <laughs> she loves that country boy. I, I do too, Miss Jean. That's the reason I reserved the table. If, if nobody else goes, I'll claim four more plates and be done. With it. Uh, it's good. It's good stuff. So those coming up, fellas, I would like for you to go. It'd be a good time for uh, some of you men. Let's get off together, and have a little fellowship, and uh, I'm telling you that church will treat you wonderful down there, Brother Brian. He's Miss Janet, the folks do a fantastic job, so don't forget that. And I think that's about all the announcements I've got. We'll cover some other things in the uh, in the uh, prayer time, but I'm glad you're here. Pray for Jonathan. It's good to see his family come in. I know he's working, so you pray for him and uh, pray for others. All right, Brother John. Look at number 34 in that great book. You get a chance and see if you know that song. Do that, pull that one out. I'll take a look at it. Well, we'll be in the blue book now, number 113. Blue hymn book, 113. We're just going to sing the first two verses, Sweet Hour of Prayer. You can stand if you want to. We're singing the first two verses. Verses. 
It's a good chapter. It's a good book. The book of Colossians is a good book to read through to build and strengthen your daily walk in your Christian life, your, just your relationship with God. Well, let's look in Colossians chapter 3 in verse 1. It said, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For you are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth for excuse me, fornication, uncleanliness, inornate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. In the which ye also walked sometime when ye lived in them, but now ye also put off these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not to one another, seeing ye have put off the old man with his deeds. And have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond or free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness, uh, excuse me, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfection, of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which ye also are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. <clears throat> and then I started to go further with this, and then I, I realized verse 18 gets into a little meddling when he says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit in the Lord. But it probably needs to be preached as much as anything else. Amen. But I want tonight, I want to preach on just being satisfied or having joy in the Christian life or being satisfied in your Christian life. When, we, when it comes to the things of God, we must above all else Declare and defend the truth. Not only do we declare it and do we defend it, but we also demonstrate the truth that we find in the Word of God. And here's what Colossians is telling us to do in this third chapter. Not only do we declare the good grace of God that has saved our souls from an eternal hell, we defend the truth of Scripture that whatever thus saith the Lord is exactly where we stand, what we believe, and how we practice and work in our life. But we demonstrate the truth of the gospel of Christ in how we live and what we do. People are more interested in how you act most of the time than what you have to say. You've heard me say this many, many times, and I say it often for my benefit as much as anybody's. But Dr. Curtis Hudson used to teach us, and you can probably help me, help me say this, but what you do speaks so loud I can't hear what you say. And he would tell us oh, that over and over and over. He, uh, for, at, 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 from time to time, at Baptist University of America, he would teach a personal evangelism class. And he'd say, don't go knock on somebody's door and try to win them to God when you live like, can I just say this? He said, when you live like hell through the week. Yeah. 
If you're going to demonstrate the gospel of Christ, live the gospel of Christ. If you're going to declare it, then you've got to demonstrate it. And if we share his life, we must follow his example. And we're not going to reach the state of holiness the Lord Jesus Christ reached. We're trapped in these bodies of flesh. But nonetheless, that, that should be our goal. He is our example. How, how he lived and what he did it ought to be our example of how we want. You, you see, we, a lot of people are not satisfied. And I hear more and more, I hear people say something along these lines. Well, I, I quit going to that church and I went to this church because I just wasn't satisfied. Well, if they were preaching the Bible, if they were preaching the truth, the problem is nothing was going to satisfy you at that point. And we, you know, if we, we share this life, then we must follow his example. And, and, and permit us to live, you know, we follow his example. He cannot live in us by his spirit if we permit ourselves to live in sin. To have the joy of our life, we need to seek to live for him. We need to be honest and sincere <clears throat> and love him above everything else. Somebody asked me last night in a meeting I was in and said, Preacher, what kind of church would you like to have if you could have whatever? You know, it's kind of a hypothetical question. Because I love the church I have right there I'm in. But I said the, the, if, if there was anything that we could do better it would be to love the Lord Jesus Christ better. To be more dedicated to Him, more, more intent on living our life intentionally for the, for the glory of God. And when we do that, we'll find that we are more satisfied than we've ever been. We will have more joy than we've ever been. You see, a, a lot of the world wants happiness. <laughs> They want that temporary euphoria that some external stimulus causes, and we refer to that as happy. And use, to use a very simple and straight, when the Braves win, and thank goodness it's almost baseball season, <laughs> when the Braves win, I'm happy. Yep. But if they lose the next night, I'm not so happy. You know why? Because that's, external stimulus. You know, I'm, I'm happy because of the win. And I know that's a poor illustration, but look how much in our Christian life is based on the same principle. When everything is going good, we're like, we're happy. Yeah. But when it's not going so good, we're not so happy. Where, a, where joy is, is different. Joy is something that abides in us and it is it is a it it really is a choice that you make. You choose joy. You're affected by happiness, and not and that really is not the direction I'm going tonight. But uh, since I've got here, I might as well try to work on it a little bit. But you know, we we just. He cannot live in us by his spirit and permit us to live in sin. We have, we have joy in our life and we must seek to live for him. And I'll tell you, many are joyless because of what I, I'm going, I, I think the Lord wants us to deal with tonight. And also we see this in three things tonight. It's a shame Brother Donnie's not here. He likes three-point messages and I'll have <laughs> six, eight, and ten and he gets all nervous. <laughs> but I, you pray for him. He's preaching now in Waterloo. But I want you to notice tonight, it, it, it is, it, we, we see it in what we seek. Look, look in these verses here, uh, verses 1 through 3 of this chapter 3. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. We are to seek the, the, the things above, not the things of the earth. Everything that you see and can put your hand to is temporary. 
Those things which come from above are eternal. We, in the last few weeks, it seemed like we they, that I've either heard more or been to more different funerals and all, just how temporary things are. But when we seek with all our heart the things that are above, we seek the things that can never be taken away. I think I use this Sunday morning. Lay not up for yourself treasures in heaven where moth and rust doth corrupt, but rather, or, or on earth where moth and rust doth corrupt, excuse me, but rather lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where moth and rust doth not corrupt, and thieves do not break through and steal. I didn't quote all that exactly. But it, you, you understand what I'm saying. The emphasis on our relationship with Christ. And, and we do we seek a relationship with Christ? Do we seek, seek a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ? Do we, do we seek a relationship with Him? Let, let me tell you tonight, I think Donna and I have a good relationship. I love her and I think she loves me. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure of it. I know she does. I'm just kidding. I know she does. But you see, our relationship was founded and we realized that it, it come from the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, amen, absolutely. Only He could have brought us as far <coughs> apart as we lived at that time. That's right. Only God could have brought that here. Yeah. And we seek those things. We seek a relationship with Christ. You say, preacher, Christ seems so far away. Well, it, he, it, heaven is a long way off, but he dwell, the Holy Spirit dwells in you. The problem is, do you seek a relationship with Him? And I told you, we, we see this in what we seek. Do we seek righteousness or do we seek a right relationship? Look in verse 3, we're, we, we died with Christ. Look what it says. For we are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. The explanation for this is found in Romans chapter 6. And I, I, I'm probably going to overload the front of this message a little bit. Let's go to the book of Romans chapter 6 for a moment. <clears throat> Romans chapter 6. And, and look with me in verse 8. I'm going to read verse 8 down through 13. Romans chapter 6, verse 8 said, Now, if we be dead in Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. Once he paid the price. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. We are to be dead to self, dead to sin, dead to praise, and we are to be alive unto God. We live for Him. Christ died for us. He was our substitution. We died with Him. That is our identification. Christ died for sin, bearing its penalty. Christ died unto sin, breaking its power. So we have victory over the penalty and the power of sin. We have victory over our old nature. Go back to Romans chapter 6 and look in verse 2. God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? If you're dead to it, you don't feel it. You don't seek it. You don't lust after it. You don't hunger for it. We have victory. We can have victory. We are. We live in Christ. In verse four, look at it. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with Him in glory. Eternal life is in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not in a catechism. It's not in a ritual. Can I tell you? It's not in baptism. Although baptism is good evidence. 
of an internal work that's taken root. But baptism doesn't save you. If I put a sinner, a lost man, in this baptistry pool, and I put him under the water, when he comes up, he's just a wet sinner. Yeah. Yeah. Baptism doesn't save you. And so we see we're dead unto sin, but alive unto Christ. It's in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let, let me, if you want to, you can turn over, but go to 1 John chapter 5 with me. 1 John chapter 5. And look in verses 12 and 13. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Now that makes it pretty simple, doesn't it? Yeah. Verse 13, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that you have... You don't have to question whether you have eternal life. You can know it. That, that ye may know that you have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Amen. We are dead unto sin, but alive in Christ. And life is what you are alive to. And then we are raised in Christ. We go back to verse 1 of Colossians 3. It said, if, the, if ye then be risen with Christ, and, and when I baptize somebody, I think Brother Melton hit this other morning. When I baptize somebody, I will say something like, you know, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Upon your confession of faith in, in Christ. I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And then I might say, you, we are buried with Christ in his death, and we are risen in Christ to walk in newness of life. Hey. Because we are. We're risen to walk in newness of life. We're raised in, in Christ. Uh, here's what uh, here's what Warden Wiersbe had to say about it. He said, our exalted position in Christ it is not a hypothetical thing or a goal for which we strive. It is an accomplished fact that we are risen. We're coming up on Easter Sunday. We're going to celebrate the resurrection. <clears throat> and we are risen in Christ. Not only are we raised in Christ, we're hidden in Christ in verse 3. It said, for you're dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. We're hidden in him, hid in Christ. Secu that tells us of our security and satisfaction. A.T. Robertson said this, So here we are in Christ, who is in God, and no burglar, not even Satan himself, can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Our motive and strength doesn't come <clears throat> from earth, but it comes from heaven. If you go back and look at, at Romans chapter 8, I'm not going to turn you back up. Those first five, five verses are, are really important verses that you walk not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Amen. And when the Bible talks about our walk, he's not, not talking about our step from here to there. He's talking about our daily life. Let me, let me give you this, and I'm sure you're probably aware of it. But when, when Scripture talks about our walk, it's talking about our life. Mm -hmm. When it says our conversation, it is talking about our daily living. Those two things are used to talk about, describe our walk, our daily life with Christ. We're hidden in Christ. Not only are we alive in Christ, raised in Christ, hidden in Christ, we're glorified in, in Christ. Look at verse 4. And when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then we shall also appear with him in glory. When we see him again, we're going to be with him. Whether it's by the rapture or whether we come back with him, either way, if we're alive, we're going to get caught up with him. If we're raptured, we're going to get caught up with him. Either way, the next time we see him, we are going to be glorified in him because we will be with him secondly tonight. Not only... <clears throat> is it seen in what we seek, but is it seen in what we slay? See, it's seen in what we put to death. Go back to Colossians chapter 3. Look in verse 5. He says, Therefore mortify your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanliness. Let me get some water. Here. 
To mortify means to put to death. He says, Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanliness, inornate, inornate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry, for which things say the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in the which you also walked some time when you lived in them. He's a good reminder. What did we do before we saved? We did these things. Verse 8, but now you also put off these, all these things, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication. Well, that's really one sentence there, filthy communication out of your mouth. In other words, quit your cussing. Lie not one another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds. Now these things we are to put to death. People call for positive doctrines a lot of time. Hey, preacher, we just want to hear the positive stuff. We uh, this word is negative, and uh, we don't want to hear nothing negative. Well, let me tell you, if you're going to, if you're going to get an electric motor to run, you've got to have a positive and a negative. If your lights are going to operate, you've got to have a positive and a negative. And if you're going to live for Christ, you've got to have a positive and a negative. They some things you've got to put to death, and they are some things you have to add. But here he's talking about the things that we mortify, the things we put to death. It, that's what it means to put the dead. We reckon ourselves dead to sin, but alive to God, according to Romans chapter 6 and verse 11. Sin comes from the heart, not from the situations around us. Your situation around you can be dire, and whether or not you sin is going to determine to be a matter of your heart. Paul named the sin. And he named the sensual sins. The, all of those, fornication, uncleanliness, inornate affection, uncleanliness, excuse me, evil concupiscence, covetousness, which is adultery, all of those are the sensual sins. And, and, and we are to purify our actions. But we must first purify our minds. I'm not going to turn you there for time's sake, but if you're taking notes, write this down. Write down Psalm 51, verse 10. Go back and read it when you can. But sin in the life of a Christian, if we allow it, it just gets worse. And then there are the social sins that he mentioned. Put off these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not to one another. The social sins. And we should be shocked at these sins in our lives. Not complacent with them, but shocked by them. All of the sins ought to shock us. All of them. Thirdly, then, I want you to notice, is seen in what we strengthen. God wants to renew us and conform us to the image of his son. Look at verses 10 and 11. And have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge, after the image of him that created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond or free, but Christ is all and in all. God wants to renew us and conform us to the image of his son. What does God want us to look like, preacher? What does God want? He wants us to be conformed to his image. Everybody knows, I think, what conform means, right? It means we take the shape off. We take the look off. If you put putty into a mold, it's going to take the shape of that mold. If you put water into a container, it's going to take on the shape of that container. It won't be solid, but it'll take the shape of it. And our nearness to Christ is going to help us conform to his image. 
there's some things to put on and some things to put off. He listed all those sins there that we're to put off. So what, preacher, we're going to put those off. What do we put on? We put on the new man. Yes. <clears throat> you know, I thought of it today. Uh, Brother Brian McBride and his family used to sing the song about I took off the old coat and put on the new. Y'all remember hearing him sing that? What a great picture of this. Laid aside, we, we put to death the old man with all of his sin. And we put on the new man, which is in Christ. That's why our earthly, our earthly birth made us a sinful man. Our new birth, our second birth, makes us a godly man. And we're to put it off. We also have a, a new nature. Once and for all, it's a one and for our all, once and for all action when we put on the new man. We now have a new nature. And we have an old nature. The new nature must be constantly renewed and the old nature must be constantly put to death. That's why Paul said, I die daily. You know, he said in Corinthians, he said, I buffet, I buffet my body. That's my version, I buffet. He calls it, I buffet my body. <coughs> this by any means, it, it overtake him. You know, a change in time and a change in quality takes place when we get born again. Amen. We now take on an eternal nature, an eternal life, not an earthly life. And the more we know about Christ, the more we become like him. We're not only to renew our actions and renew our thoughts, we renew our minds. Study His Word. Grow in grace. And we may be conformed to His image. And we're going to have the joy in our lives that Christ Jesus wants us to have. In fact, if we're going to have the joy in our life that the Christ Jesus died for us to have, then we're going to have to do these things here in Corinthians. Some things to seek, some things to slay, and some things to strengthen. And we become confirmed or conformed more and more to his image. Amen. Yeah. Father, I pray you to help us tonight to learn, Lord, that this old flesh Lord, it's not been redeemed and it's still there with all of its sin. But Lord, greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world. By ourselves we can't. But through the power of the Word of God, the power of the Holy Spirit that indwells us, and a longing to be conformed to your image, Lord, we can put off the old and put on the new. And Lord, one day we will get everything new. New mind, new body. A body not racked and ruined by sin and by the aging process of this life. What a great day that will be. But God, until we see you face to face, until we are glorified in you, God, help us to live daily being conformed to your image. Strengthen us, help us, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> All right. Josiah, I'm with you. It's hot. I see Josiah. All these, <coughs> all these last few months we've been running heat. Need to air on them, don't we? And uh, let me give you a few things here by way of your prayer bulletin, and I'll uh, just we'll move right along. Still praying for the Gant Josie family, that's Sister Pat Josie's family. Brother, pray for Miss Barita Maynard, for Preacher Moore's family, Brother Joe Arthur's family, uh, that the Lord would certainly touch them. And then you've got a list of folks down through there, of our folks. Now, on Friday, Brother Jerry Bridges is to have a upper and lower GI uh, done to see if they can do anything about this bacteria that's gotten a hold of him. So you pray for Brother Bridges. He did have surgery last week 
on his ear uh, to remove a, a melanoma. And then he's going to have this done on Friday. So you, you pray for Brother Bridges. Uh, pray for uh, Sister Debbie Cable, who's still battling cancer. Pray for Miss Norma, Miss Heather Darnell.